G'day, everybody. Pretty excited about this edition of the KTM Summer Grill at speedcafe.com. We are joined by three generations of the Johnsons, Dick, Jet, and Stephen. Welcome to all of you. Thanks for us. We, Thank you. you. You kicked off uh, 2022 by all of you on track together in Mustangs, in red. That was pretty bloody special, wasn't it? Pretty special, all right. And Nick has as soon as I put my backside in a car, what's it do? Starts to rain. We're on slicks. It's just, yeah, it was typical, but anyway. Did you know the full extent that you would all be in cars together? Or, I don't think it was actually quite pitched to you that way in the leader, was it? No, it wasn't. It was actually uh, pitched to us by obviously Ryan's story and, um, and this vision that he had of what he wanted to do. We thought we were all going there to just drive the same car and do a little bit of PR stuff together. And and uh, when we got there and we had all three cars, were all sort of lined up in sort of a semi-triangle, three number 17s uh, with three Johnsons on the window. It, was, uh, it just blew us, blew us away. He probably went you. Do you know? But, <laughs> but, but we didn't know and Jet's gone. Well, first of all, I've turned up in his road car, which was a... Yeah, hold the marine up. There's a headline. <laughs> so his dad says you got to start from the bottom and work your way out. Well, um, and uh, I'm pulling my race gear out of this marina, and and uh, Megan from Shell comes over and goes, "Oh, have you seen the, the pit lane?" And we're like, "No." She goes, "Oh, nice car, by the way." Yeah. Uh, anyway, go and have a look. And yeah, just honestly, we it's still. You know, I've got the photo of the three of us on my screensaver and on my computer. And every time I open my computer, it's just like, I still can't believe it. And it's probably something that, well, as he says, this is never going to happen again. I'm mm. going to put my bum in the seat again. So very cool. I know. Only because I can't get into the <laughs> <laughs> I know since you're a young bloke and you love having conversations with him about race cars and all kinds of things, that must have been a little bit surreal, wasn't it? Yeah, with... um. It was good to see Grandpa. He's always giving me advice and having jabs at me about stuff. So it was good to finally get on track with him and see how he goes. I mean, he went, went half a right. Could see it was raining, you're on slicks. But um, yeah, I think growing up with obviously Grandpa and Dad giving me you know, all this advice and watching both Dad and Grandad race, obviously Grandad on TV and YouTube and going to the races with Dad and watching him on TV and you know, being able to take all that in and then finally getting go on track with them as well was really, really emotional. And, you know, it's not something I thought I'd ever do, but, you know, there we were on the day. It was still didn't quite hit me while we were in the cars driving around that we were on track together. But, yeah, it was a really, really, really special day. We'll reflect on where you'd like to go, I think, ultimately with that a little bit later. It's a game of sacrifice, you know that especially and you do too and and that meant that in 2022 a little bit of a reduced program for you but some highs mate to bathurst international adelaide and so on they were really cool and terrific our masters weren't they? yeah it was it was it was great to get back back in the seats and uh um and have a couple of races at the end of the year you know a little bit sad that we couldn't get the xd out you know putting everything towards this young fella here to try to keep him on track um and you know at the end of the day i've had my professional career um, you know, that's obviously I don't make any money out of that anymore as a driver. So I've got to understand. I've got to grow up a little bit, Rusty. I think I've got to grow up a little bit. What's going to be the best moving forward? And, and yeah, obviously a reduced program for me driving this year, but more obviously workload with him and, and some customer work as well for our little Team Johnson team. But um, uh, it did feel good to get back to Bathurst um, in a Mustang as well. And um, and to finish the year off with, with seven out of eight wins was something that I didn't expect. Where in the realm of everything this year does the TA2 title for your son, for your grandson, right? Where does that sit in your mind? Pretty special. Pretty special. Uh, where it is when you see uh, certainly the amount of racing that he's done and by comparison to where we've grown up, um, it's just gone from basically a go-kart than uh, just a number of events in a Hyundai XL and and then the jump into a TA2 car, a Trans Am car, was, uh, was, was a big step. But uh, he handled it extremely well, and uh, I think the results has sort of proved that. What did it mean to you, and what is it in launch pad terms? Like, are you going to have a real crack at Trans Am next year? What's your, what's your plan? Um, yeah, I want to have a big go at Trans Am next year. This year was just about learning the tracks mainly. Um, 
getting experience in the cars as well. But next year we really want to have a go. Now that I've got that bit of seat time in the car itself and around the tracks that we'd be going to next year, I think I'd be able to give it you know, a better crack and I'd have a better starting point for next year as well. So I really want to focus more on results next year too. I think I think looking at it too, Rusty, when you, you know, to this year was all about doing as much as we could and go as m many places around the country as we could yeah. um, for, for him racing. The only track really he'd raced at um, as a car track was, was Morgan Park in the XL and we did Winton together as the uh, endurance um, back in the back end of 2019, I think, wasn't it? So, um, to be able to go to places like Bathurst, you know, you know, Tasmania, Sims Plains, um, Tab Bend, um, uh, was fantastic. And, and I think it showed that you can't just go to a new track and, and, and be fast and then mm -hmm. experience counts because, yeah, he was always in and around that top 10 mark, um, sometimes a little bit further up, sometimes a little bit further back. But then when he went to a track that he knew, like Queensland Raceway, it was all of a sudden qualified up the front and race, you know, we're racing Brady Kostecki, which I think is one of his highlights for the year. And to finish P2 in that Trans Am round was, um, I think showed him that you can't just go there expecting to do well. You, you, you know, you've got to do the apprenticeship. You've got to learn the tracks. And, um, and that's sort of half of the idea this year. We had great fun in the, uh, in the speed series coverage at Sandown by asking the viewers about who was the more popular in their eyes, you or you. And it's quite a close, quite a close poll. It's a bit of, a bit of, yeah. <laughs> but, but the point I, I, that kind of stood out for me in all the, the fun around that aspect of the broadcast was how good it was for your relationship with your son. You're away. Yes, you're doing a bit of racing too, but you're there together and then you can add, you know, grandson to that. But that, um, that's a damn good thing, isn't it? It's uh, something that um, oh, I had with dad, you know, as a, as a kid. Um, he was away, part of me, racing a lot while I was doing go-karting. So every now and then, most of the time, I'd be uh, at the go-kart track with, um, you know, Roy or um, your dad's brother, Dino, mm. uh, when dad was away. But then when we obviously started doing supercars and I started racing supercars as a part-time thing of the endurance side of things for DJR, um, we did a lot of that together. Mm. Um, you know, a lot of my, tip, my decisions are based around family. Uh, I, you know, notably could have gone and probably had a more successful career in the way of stats um, if I went to other teams where I had the opportunity, but I didn't want to do that, you know. Um, I wanted to sub the family. I wanted to drive it out of Bathurst, which we did in 98, 99. And, um, and that ticked a lot of boxes for me, you know, and then to go um, racing full-time from 2000, obviously with him then pretty much every step of the way was was great. And, and that's something that... Um, you know, we, obviously we raced against each other too in, in 90, 95, I think, wasn't it? Around 95, I think it, uh, with the Fud Rakers. You know, Fud Rakers. Yeah, yeah, but also the, the racing for life car, the Eop Falcon. And it, all of a sudden, the, 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 the minor um, program that I did in that year to get some more miles before the endurance races, uh, you know, Dad was, was sort of there or thereabouts always, you know, in the top six. But all of a sudden I turn up to do a round and he's on pole and he's winning races and I'm like... Why can't you just be back in the top 10 with me? You know? <laughs> um, but to have him, and I, that's what we want to do. I want to, there's, there's so much moving forward to, for him to look forward to that's going to be high pressure. I don't want him to feel pressure now. I want him to literally just go and enjoy for a Understand the commercial aspect. Yeah. Um, do that properly. Um, he noticed that, um, you know, he knows the percentages of what he needs to be in and out of the car. Mm. You know, being to be a successful race driver, it's 85% outside the car. Okay. You know, and, and the rest of it inside. So, um, you know, he's working hard at that, which is great. And I just wanted to sort of get his mindset right to be successful down the track now and not think that he's just got to be a fast driver to uh, um, to be successful. It does. It might be if he's answered this in part, but for both of you, does that make you coach or grandpa or coach or dad or you're a little bit of both? What what are you in, in that sense? No, I'll leave that up to Steve. I just sit back and I'll say something that needs to be said, but um, kind of like... Steve, obviously, had been uh, in previous times had been concentrating a little bit on what he was doing as far as the TCM car and stuff like that. But that's why I made the decision that uh, we'll sell the 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 XD mm -hmm. um, to give Jet a better chance of uh, and you know both financially and okay. and sort of with time mm -hmm. to uh, to further his career. Hopefully, how much do you 
think about that. You know, that's that's a pretty significant move that's been made to to help you. And at, my question is two part here because the the Johnson name comes with so much cachet in motor racing, but in some ways it probably comes with lots of expectation too, mate. Does it? Yeah, it does. It's you know I try not to think about it too much. Um, and yeah, at the same time, that's that's not going to get me into supercars. Just having the Johnson name, mm-hmm. um, I know I still need to work, but you know, there's some aspects where having you know the name like we have makes it a little bit easier for me, mm-hmm. I'd say. But yeah, it's um, that's something that I do try and keep in mind mm-hmm. as much as I can. And um, yeah, in regards to the XD, that's you know, absolutely massive. I, I kind of feel a bit bad about it, to be honest with dad, not being able to go out and race the XD. And it's really, yeah, I, I, I love that car. I'd love to see it out more with dad in the car, but he'd love to drive it. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I'd love to drive it. <laughs> so, first, um, first person to, to drive the Gen 3 Mustang at yeah. Mappus. We're in a new phase for, for Supergirls. What was that like? Well, difficult, um, extremely difficult. Getting in and getting out. <laughs> but it, the, the cars are so, so different to uh, uh, certainly the stuff that I've been driving during my career. But And they're a lot different to the current cars, you know, the cars that we have been running up until now um, because there's a lot less aero. And I'm only just going on some of the comments that the guys that haven't driven them in anger, that uh, you know, they're, they're a lot harder to drive and they're uh, something that, that you're going to have to really work hard at and yeah, as a driver, which I think is a good thing because if it's more about the driver than it is about you know the aerodynamic package, I think um, it'll produce much better race. DJR clicked over amazingly a thousand races in supercars and the Australian Touring Car Championship, and I think it reached that number at Bathurst. I mean that is crazy, crazy. And here, yeah, uh, just you know a thousand races, I suppose is a few of us. And yeah, yeah, I don't think. Um, there's, I don't think anyone else comes sort of relatively close to that at this point. Yeah. And they won't catch us because we're going to keep going. So give us a rough mate. Yeah, then we were delighted to, to know that and to feel that, Dick. Give us a reflection for ship, you know, Shelby Power Racing on season 2022 report card. Um, look, we could have done a lot of, a lot of things better. But um, I think that um, the, the guys did a magnificent job and spent with what they had to deal with because we were building the Gen 3 car, which obviously took a little bit of focus off the main game. <laughs> and I think we probably made a, a number of little mistakes, which I think we've um, rectified. <laughs> and uh, I can assure you we won't be seeing any mistakes again uh, going forward. A little bit of change within the team as well with David Noble coming on board. What's How's he settled in? What's that been like? Well, he settled in... Uh, pretty well for day two <laughs> as we record this yeah, yeah. Uh, but David comes with an awful lot of experience of uh, of sport and teams and how to run teams and it's it's been rather difficult because Ryan has been you know rather real and that's really it, that really has played a, a big hand in uh, in the performance of the team because you know when people want uh questions answered and they they can't get answers to them because you know he's he's not well and and then hasn't been able to sort of uh, yeah. be on on the hand at you know most of the time so but that you know will uh, be rectified with with they well don't, don't get me wrong look Ryan's not coming anywhere anywhere exactly yeah he's going to be there um as much as he possibly can yeah. and uh, i think uh, he's on the way up at this point in time i think i would find that uh, it'll all be uh, roses and all full steam ahead for next year. I know we're focused on DJR here in this in this part of the conversation. He comes from a different background from an from an AFL background, so that that sort of change in management, fresh ideas, things like that. What does that mean for you and your role within it, and what will it do for the team? Do you think? Well, look, I don't care how old you are or you know how experienced you are. There's always something you you can learn, and and uh, and I believe that David can bring a lot of things. Uh, from from an outside look at, uh, at the sport, he really he really enjoyed uh, Bathurst mm-hmm. as uh, as an event, and 
what he did say was the fact he said, I cannot believe how similar, uh, because of the team arrangement, just how similar he is to uh, to where he's been in, in the AFL. Wow. And uh, I know he's, he's been well respected in the AFL, and I think Google will, he'll be able to make his mark here too. Good stuff. Can we get thoughts from all of you? Because you, you know, whether you're aspiring, whether you, you know, you've raced in it and you're still immersed in it. Um, new phase for for supercars with Gen Three. What do, what do you what do you think about that? And are, are we going to be in for a little bit of a reset here? I mean, in 2022, it was about let's catch Triple Eight and, and Shane Van Gisbergen, a mighty year for for the rivals. What based on what you were just talking about, we might be in for a bit of bit of variety. Well, I think so. And I think um, finally we might even have a level playing field, which I think is pretty important about the whole scheme of things because uh, you know you don't ever take a knife to a gunfight and. And uh, I think that uh, once the cars are all the same, which they should be, uh, I think we're going to see some spectacular race. Is that something you, I mean, you clearly are aspiring to this. And, and is that in the realm of all the hard work you're doing at TAFE? And, you know, I saw you with the with the Trans Am car at an event this year, working on it, on the tools yourself. But that's obviously the goal, is it? Yeah, well, um, yeah, at the moment with what I'm doing, like you said, working on the cars, whenever I can, um, I'm working with, Ben, our mechanic, you know, every day we're doing either on a Trans Am car or on a customer car. I'm doing that just to try and learn the cars more so I can understand what's going on more, understand what goes into the cars and just get a better understanding for all the behind the scenes stuff. And yeah, I think that's really going to help me moving forward into, you know, the dev series and then into hopefully into supercars. That's you know, something I feel like I'll really benefit off and that a lot of others have benefited off from what I've seen as well. It's going to be good. I mean, you work in the media on the side as, as well. I mean, it's a lot of excitement about it. Yeah, there is. And, you know, obviously there's been a lot of uh, people excited to see what it's going to, what's going to unfold next year. We really still don't know what it's going to be like when we get, you know, 25 odd cars all together on the grid. Mm. Uh, from the From the start of the, uh, I guess the the car of the future era. Um, looking back there, or, you know, remembering back then, the team to be at the start was Brad Jones Racing. Mm. They were cleaning everybody up. They had, um, you know, I know the cars were quite hard to set up to get understanding of, get the rear stability on them. Brad Jones Racing had it nailed. So you could quite easily see uh, another team that comes out running, but I don't think you'll see them out front for too long because you know i think the the powerhouse teams like the shelby power racings and 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 triple eight um pretty quick to get on top of stuff these mm -hmm. days and i think that you know i think you'll still see it settle but i still think that the gaps that you see will be much much smaller and within the field from head to toe and they're already very close were you good this year was santa you know kind of kind to you and do you get to enjoy a little you know a little lemonade on christmas day type thing whatever <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the few privileges. <laughs> but, you know, I, I think it's just one of those situations where, you know, this time of the year, everyone gets a, a bit of an opportunity to recharge themselves. It's been a pretty long year and yeah. and certainly coming out of the, the COVID times and stuff like that and how hard they, um, supercars had to work to sort of get a program together, et cetera, et cetera. And with all the changes and, um, and to sort of get a, an abid like Adelaide up was just nothing short of spectacular. Great way to end it, wasn't it? Amazing. Unbelievable. And mm. next year to uh, uh, to start at Newcastle, mm. which is another magic event, and uh, and finish it at, uh, at Adelaide. What, boys, you know, what a program. And in amongst there, you've got Bathurst and Townsville and Darwin and all the good places to go. Yeah, you know, it's just, it's going to be a really good thing. And that, and the, the new owners uh, are really, I think, of these sitting back, uh, taking uh, everything into account, seeing who's who in the zoo and... Writing a lot of notes. Writing a lot of notes, and I think uh, they'll come out with uh, an extremely good product for next year. Okay, well, you've been around the game long enough, you know, politicians, nice to see politicians sticking to their word, eh, in Adelaide? That was... <laughs> Rusty, you know, I can say this, I've been around motor racing a long, long time, and... And I've seen a lot of politicians in motorsport uh, come in and this is the first time ever that I have ever seen a, a major politician um, to come out and be the Premier come out and people cheered. Yeah. Because yeah. that's how much that event meant 
to Adelaide and the, to the people who go to a flight. Yeah. And I thought it was just brilliant. Yeah, so did we. Enjoy your festive season. Uh, we know it's a time of, as you said, recharging. We appreciate you. I'm stopping by to, to have a chat. Good luck Thank for you. next year. We hope it's a, uh, it's a, it's a super year. And thanks for, for coming in for a, a conversation. Pleasure, Rusty. There you go. Stephen Johnson, Jet Johnson, and the great Dick Johnson joining us today on this edition of the KTM Summer Grill at speedcafe.com. Join us tomorrow to see who our next special guest is. As a part of this year's Summer Grill, our great partner in KTM each week has a special prize pack to give away, which includes a stool, a stubby holder, and a KTM hat. Very cool additions for your man cave, your garage, or just for around the barbecue. To enter, all you've got to do is head to speedcafe.com or click on the link description below and you could be in the running. And check out, of course, tomorrow's next edition of the KTM Summer Grill right here at speedcafe.com.